Hi there, friends. I'll come in here with a quick note to let you know that the first global product owner summit organized by the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast is coming soon. To know more, check out the bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. And uh, stick around to the end of the episode to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Team Tuesday. This week, we have with us Alina Taplial. Hey, Alina. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So uh, Tuesday is Team Tuesday here on the podcast, of course, and we'll talk about teams in a second. But before we go there, do share with us, what's the book that most influenced you in your career as a Scrum Master? Oh, gladly. Um, It is a book. It's called Make Your Bed. It's written by William McRaven. It's not about Scrum, but you know, most of the good books are there, even there. Even though they are not written for Scrum, they apply so well to Scrum. And I, I remember I had this conversation with my uh, product owner. And he said, it's amazing how all these books can be applied so well in Scrum, you know. And uh, the reason when I wanna, why I want to bring up uh, this book is because it's very, um, it relates a lot to the things I, 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 I experienced in, in the team, you know. So he tells about 10 things you can do to change yourself and change the world, you know? And one of it is just to start with a very small, simple task, like making your bed. Because once you have that done, then you can do other tasks. Then you can complete other tasks, you know? It talks about uh, uh, motivation. It talks about how you face your fears head first. You know, you don't have to be afraid of failure. You need to to face this failure and and learn from them. You know, it talks about that. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter the color of your eyes, the hair, how old, how young you are. Matters how big your heart is. That's all that matters, you know. And I can relate so much to to this book and uh, I would totally recommend it. Yeah, it's. It also sounds. I haven't read the book, of course, but it it sounds that it it treats us, so the reader, as a human being, right? Like yes. it, it's about recognizing that we are actually in the middle of other human beings, and we are human beings ourselves. Exactly. And and sometimes small things are very powerful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's and what it is. From from that perspective, what comes to my mind is that sounds exactly like the the point of view that we should exhibit that we should demonstrate as scrum masters right simple rules and all for people because what matters as you said is not it's not the color of your hair or the height of your body but it's it's, do you have a big heart are you willing to give it a try absolutely yeah yeah (laughs) that's why i love this book Definitely a great, uh, a great example of how we as Scrum Masters sometimes just need to go back to basics and, and start asking, you know, how, how, are, how, how am I treating my team? Are, yeah. are they a team or, or are they individuals, human beings that I need to relate to? Yeah, absolutely. And in this book, he, he tells that you, you can achieve things alone, but it's better to have someone next to you. You know, you can achieve so much more in a team, team effort how, to, to depend on others and to help each other. And that's exactly what we're also having Scrum. You, you cannot do Scrum alone. It's a team. Absolutely. It's a team sport. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> scrum is a team sport. Indeed. I have to write that down. All right. That was the book, of course, Alina. And now we focus on the teams and how sometimes they can become their own worst enemies. So tell us a story about a team, uh, give us a little bit of context, and then walk us Mm -hmm. through those patterns, those behaviors that developed over time that ultimately led to problems. Yeah. um, Last year, so when when we started, uh, first of all, I need to say we, we are not creating or developing any software. We 
uh, are a uh, platform team. So we are building an infrastructure, you know. So the things are a little bit different. Obviously, Scrum is Scrum. It doesn't matter what, how or where you use it, you know. But um, for this infrastructure, so we also had to re to write a lot of concepts, a lot of documents, you know. And the question we had, how do we apply the second prince, agile principle, you know, when the actually product increment is a document, you know, how, how do we do that? And I remember we had this, this long stories and sometimes they would go for two, three sprints. We had to take it over. Oh, it's still not ready. Still, we need to clarify this. Still, we need to cl clarify that. And, you know, it's not always one thing which leads to this down curve, you know, there are always a series of events, you know, uh, because when you start working with a team, and this is what I learned from last year from, from the Agile Summit, is that it goes worse be before it gets better. And I think right here in this down curve, when, when it started getting worse, because uh, you had to process the change, the team had to process the change to understand how to how to work in this new environment, you know, and so we were in this. And the change curve. was adopting agile, right? The, the change was adopting agile, and so we had this, and then there were the big stories that, like, we seemed we never finished them; they're always there, you know. And on top of that, because we are using safe. Uh, that came also with a little bit of frustration. How is this implemented? Dependencies between teams and that. So all this added up. And I remember that at that point, we had a uh, PI uh, retro and demo event. And I think it came only problems, problems, problems. This does not work. This is like this. This is like that. This needs to be improved. This needs to be improved, you know? And we were in this situation. And then... Uh, I personally was really frustrated with these long stories because when they are short, when they are small enough to fit in the sprint, if you have time left, you can take another short story to work it, you know, but if it's too long, you sometimes get lost in the details, what needs to be done, is everything done? Is that 90% done, this 90% done syndrome, <laughs> you know, and I remember at that point, um, I don't know exactly who, I believe our department manager or product owner said, you know, guys, there is a new training going on about how to write um, concepts. Are you interested? And say, yes, we go there. And this was the change point because we attended this training and we actually, what we did is we literally took a story from the backlog of writing a concept and we said, this is the story. And during this training, there were a lot of exercises which you need to do and we want to write the concept for this story during these exercises you know and it was amazing because in these four days we were able to write about 60 70 percent of a concept only during exercises so then it, it, it hit me and and I started I discussed with one of my colleagues you know you know, do you realize what we did here, you know? Do, do you realize that we managed to write this thing in almost a matter of a few hours? And rather than us concentrate on problems, because there were so many things going on with SAFE, with so on, we said, what if we concentrate what went well or what were the success factors which helped us write this concept so fast, you know? And then I said, okay. Then we made a diagram and said, okay, well, the teacher was there. I said, oh, okay, that's the know-how that we need because we can't have every time a teacher next to us. So maybe we need to make a research spike. Uh, then we need to uh, decide upon the title. Then we need to decide uh, about how big we want the document to, to be. How much details do you want to bring? And one th really interesting thing was this... I would call it a, a quadrant. So you, you literally take a piece of paper, you divide it by four, and you say, uh, in the first quadrant, you, you write down the, the problems you want to solve with the concept or the premises or the chances you want to bring. In the other quadrant, you, you write your stakeholders. For whom do you write this? Because you need to know your audience, right? And who will write this? With whom do you need to write it? And then uh, the, the third quadrant would be, 
the, the uh, solutions which you bring for the, all the problems which you mentioned, and then how you measure these things. And with this simple quadrant, you, you already have in your mind how big the document should be, why do you write it, for whom you write it. And that was this, this breakthrough which we needed. And then we... We created stories based on, on these things, on the exercises we did in, in the, during the uh, the training. And I mean, we don't necessarily to write all the stories for every single concept we need to write. Maybe we don't need a spike, or maybe we don't necessarily need to write a quadrant because we can take an already uh, written document and just change a few things. But it brought us this breakthrough that we needed that finally, after trying so many methods to 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 break stories to to uh, we finally had a breakthrough which applied to us you know and, and actually that's a very important point from obviously from the motivation perspective to feel that okay there's a solution for this right we yes. we we now understand more but I, I i was just thinking as you were describing this that you had been searching for solution in how to uh, the this infinite or very long yeah. stories you had been searching for solution yes. in the process right like yes. you know better retros better dailies whatever yes. but the solution was elsewhere yes. right the solution yes. was just in in the 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 idea of what a concept is and what you need to take into account and and i was just thinking that this very often happens to our teams that we're like for example we have a pro i just had that with with a team recently we have a problem where you know we we start planning the work from tasks right we list all of these tasks that we need to do and then we apply scrum on it and then we find out that actually scrum doesn't help us because the tasks just keep on appearing and there's more tasks and so on yes and 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 uh, uh, obviously you know scrum isn't going to solve that problem right if we start planning from tasks or in your case if if you start writing writing a concept from the perspective that everything needs to be there at the end yes, yes. then you always have to find everything before yes. it is there right <laughs> indeed but yeah. if you if you reshape your thinking and say hey mm -hmm. Concepts don't really need all of this. We just need the, you know, the problems, the solutions, the the stakeholders mm -hmm. and and the partners to write this. Then then we start looking at the problem completely different, right? And and indeed, very often I I start to think when we are doing retros, I start to think, hmm, should we actually think about not the problem we're discussing, but why is it the problem? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we had that in one of the retro one. Uh, uh, one colleague said, you know, we don't necessarily need to solve every problem. Sometimes, okay, it's a problem there, but you don't need to go so deep into it because you never come out of it, you know? <laughs> just just let's concentrate. Let's look at the things from a different perspective, you know? Let's let's change a little bit the, the perspective, you know? And this is what, what this training brought us, to, to look at the things from a different perspective, you know? And then because we had already worked... I don't know when exactly we did the, this training, like halfway through last year, we already had this agile mind and the, the scrum mind in, in, in our head. And it helped us to, to better relate or to better use what we learned and apply it in our field, you know, and was, yeah, amazing in the end. <laughs> Absolutely. And a great tip. Sometimes you just need to find a different perspective. And as you said yesterday, maybe that's just somebody else from the outside that comes in and asks a different question. Yes. Yes. I I could have asked that question a thousand times, but it, we needed a somebody else to say it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Alina. You're very welcome. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around. This year's first global summit dedicated to the product owner role in Scrum will have some amazing keynotes and two tracks filled with first-hand stories and experiences for product owners to learn more about that critical Scrum role. We'll have Roman Pichler, author and product expert, who'll be answering your questions and sharing the most important aspects of the product owner role. We'll also have Colleen Johnson talking about why roadmaps are probably making your life much harder than it needs to be and uh, what to do instead. This talk was quite a success in Agile Online Summit 2022 and Colleen has learned some new 
tricks, tools, techniques that she will share with us when it comes to roadmaps for the product owner role. And we will also have Henry Nibery, author of Scrum and Kanban from the Trenches, as well as one of the creators of the Spotify model. So come in and listen to his stories. And uh, we'll also have, of course, two tracks with uh, many more sessions and even some live sessions. The two tracks will cover practices every product owner should know, uh, where we'll be hosting conversations on topics that product owners need to be familiar with, like product re backlog refinement, planning, and much more. The second track will be on metrics, measuring product and personal success as a product owner. As product owners, it's crucial to have a clear understanding of what are the metrics that drive success for us and, of course, also for the products and businesses that we work with. And we need to continuously measure and optimize those metrics. So in this track, we'll be sharing what's working and what's not in the area of measuring success for product owners. We will also have the opportunity to network with our peers. It's a network event, of course. So get your tickets and join our Slack. Go to uh, bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023. That's all one word, all lowercase. As always, we will have free tickets and VIP tickets, which will give you long term access to the content of this summit. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash product owner 2023, all lowercase, all one word. I'll see you on the summit floor.